Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our second example of how to use the mesh analysis by inspection method on a relatively simple example. On this, here you can see we have two voltage sources, we have four resistors. Let's go ahead and follow the instructions on how to do that. The first thing we we'll always want to do is assign the mesh currents to each of the meshes. There are two, and I like to use the clockwise direction for the current. So here's mesh current one, and here's mesh current two. The next thing we'll want to do is find the resistance matrix elements because what we eventually want to end up with is a two equations. There's two unknowns here, so we want to put two equations in the matrix format. It'll look like this. This matrix right here will have the unknown currents, and this matrix right here will have the voltages for each mess as we go around each of the meshes. We add up all the voltages only from the voltage sources, not from any voltage drops across the resistors. But first we want to find the elements of this um, resistance matrix. We want to find the diagonal elements first. So finding R11, which is the upper left diagonal element, that is equal to the sum of all the resistances as we go around the loop. It doesn't matter what direction you go, you simply add all the resistances together. So it would be 5 plus 10 in this case. 5 plus 10, which is 15, and that goes up in the upper left corner. To find this diagonal element, the second one, R22, we go around the loop and we add up all the resistances. Again, it doesn't matter what the direction is. Here we get 10 plus 6 plus 4, which is 20, and that goes down here in this location. Now we have the diagonal elements. Now we want to get the off-diagonal elements. For that, we realize that R12 is equal to R21. It is the negative of the resistances that they share. We sum up all the resistances they share. There's only one right here. It's the negative of that value, minus 10, and that goes into these two locations, minus 10 and minus 10. Finally, we want to find the voltages as we go around each of the loops. Notice we're going to travel around the loop in the same direction as the mesh current. In this case, we have a 15 volt rise, and here we have a 10 volt drop. So the net result is 15 rise minus 10 drop. That's the total sum of all the voltages around the loop. So that's an equal, that's equal to five volts in this case. For the second loop, same direction as the current. Here we go from the negative to the positive side, but there's only one source, so it's positive 10 for that. Now we're ready to solve for I1 and I2. We do that by first finding the determinant. The determinant is equal to, we have 10. 15 minus 10. 20. So this is equal to 300 minus the product of those two, that would be 100, which is 200. So that's the value for the determinant. Now we want to find the first matrix, which we find by taking the determinant matrix but replacing the first column by the voltages. 10. And Get minus five. 10, positive 20. This would be 5 times 20, which is 100, minus a minus plus 100, which is 200. We find the second matrix to find the second current by taking the determinant matrix but replacing the second column by the voltage. Minus 10, but the second column becomes 5 and 10. This will give us 15 times 10, which is 150, minus times a minus, because there's a minus here, 50, which is 200, which means that I1 can be found by taking the result of the first matrix, which is 200, and divided by the determinant matrix, which is 200, which is equal to 1 amp. You can find the second current by taking the uh, result of the second matrix, 200, divided by the determinant matrix, 200, which is also 1 amp. So both I1 and I2 are 1 amp. Now what will be the current through the 10 ohm resistor? Well, let's find out. Assuming that it's in this direction, call it I3. We can then say that I3 is equal to I1, because I1 is in the same direction as I3, minus I2, because I2 is in the opposite direction of I2. This is equal to 1 amp for I1, minus 1 amp for I2, which is equal to 0 amps, which means that in the middle branch, there's absolutely no current. It's kind of strange when you think about it, because there is a voltage source, but it turns out that the other voltage source, other voltage source overrides this voltage source capability of driving current through it in either direction. So therefore, it's stymied and no current flows to this branch. One amp flows this way, one amp flows this way, so it turns out there's one amp of current flowing in the outside loop and none of it through the branch in the middle. 
You can see how nice we can find an answer quickly with this method. So let me show you some more complicated setups, some more complicated circuits. Of course, when you put a 4x4 or 5x5 matrix, you probably want to throw that into a computer or into your calculator because it would be very difficult to do it by hand. But setting it up is going to be really easy. Just watch what we have in store for you on the next videos.